All right, everybody. Uh, we are going to do an evaluation of just how trained Jewel, the mare that we rescued from the auction with her baby, just how trained she really is. She's supposed to be a well-broke trail horse, and I'm still hurting too bad to ride one, so we're going to sacrifice Becca as the guinea pig. <laughs> And uh, we're going to catch her up, take her up, do a lesson with her, groundwork. And if she's looking like she's broke, we're going to get on her and see how she rides. By broke, Don't that's we... just an old country net word for being trained is what I mean. Um, we don't really use that term anymore when we are working with horses. We say started, but old habits die hard. Sometimes I still say, see if a horse is broke to see if it can be rode. But mm, He's classy. There's Champ. There's Lady. Get up here, maybe we can see better. And there's Miracle. We got her at an auction last year. Champ, no. Drop it. <laughs> Stop it. Hi, pretty mama. Hi. Bike, classy. Yes. Classy, good, good girl. And how's my boy? How's my boy, Champ? This is the one that I'm hoping to be my show horse, everybody. Because, I mean, sure, they're all my horses, but I, none of them are really my horse that I'm planning to keep as my primary riding horse. This is the one that I have my hopes and dreams on right now to be my primary riding horse. And I will ride Oliver a lot. He might be my one of my primary riding horses, but I plan on using him on a wagon with the family more than I do trail ride him. I will trail ride him a little, but I, he, you know he's not going to be able to walk as fast as these fox trotters walk. Here's Becca over here with her little girl. She's the friendliest little baby. Oh, and her little muzzle's starting to change. Mm -hmm. Hi. We've been working on picking her feet up. Oh, dear. Oh. Wow, Ozark and Karen look so much alike. It turns, it turns. Oh, you oh. so good. Yeah, yeah. Look at this, Sam. Yeah, she likes you. She tried to bite me. Yes, I'm gonna go. Happy did? No. Karen did? Yeah. I'm getting grain. Yeah, you... Karen's really yeah, just you... settling in. Yes. Calm me down. Okay, I'm a going. Okay, we'll follow. How are you guys doing? Hi. Okay. more nervous this time than they were when we had them up, huh? This mare was real nervous that day when I did her feet. Yeah. Oh, I can show you a little bit of that. We had her feet trimmed up. A friend of ours who is a farrier and does most of our farrier work came down and trimmed up her feet. Most of the work was done on the front feet. They were pretty long um, and the back feet were pretty good. Uh, so he just filed the back feet a little bit and then trimmed the front and she was all set. Yeah. How long we have, have we had him now, Jer? What do you think, a month now? So after we got the mare in full, uh, JR actually ended up getting a little virus and was sick for a couple weeks. And then right after that, he had a little riding accident and pretty much cracked a rib and um, bruised his lung. Now, I, I, we wouldn't have done this any earlier anyway because you want the babies to be six weeks old before, uh, before you ride the mama. And that's about this. So the timing's about right now. So this is the first time we've gotten the mare in full out like this uh, to evaluate the mare, which she needed to recoup from birth and settle in. So in the long run, it was a good thing. Good, she's blowing out. Oh, well, she knows. That means she knows what this is about. <laughs> she's holding her, blowing out. That means they're holding their breath, making their belly big so that the saddle can't get tight on them. That might mean she knows a thing or two. Stop. 
try to make this a positive experience as we can. Like I say, there's a good chance she may be fully broke. She's supposed to be. Fully trained anyway, what we say. Lots of trail mile experience and supposed to have been on hunting adventures and everything else. But that's kind of a, a typical thing to say for gated horse fox trotters, especially in the south. They'll say, oh, she's been hog hunted off of. But they say that on almost every one. And I don't know that it could possibly be true that every fox trotter has been hog hunting. Good girl. Show them. Now, we haven't even exercised you yet. Oh, wow. It already, <laughs> she really blew up. Yeah. You know the tricks, don't you, girly? Well, that's a good sign that she should know what she's doing. <laughs> Her little baby sure is pretty. She had never seen that ball before, Oliver's ball, um, but she didn't react to it much with it bouncing and the noise that it made, so that was good. Here, I'm just wanting to see if the mare reflects at all off of the bit pressure. She's very bracy against the bit, meaning she pulls against it really hard and doesn't give. She has no soft feel to her mouth, as some horsemen would say. And I think it's just that she hasn't had a bit in her mouth very much. Um, it's hard to say. I still haven't been able to get a hold of the original owner, uh, despite a few phone calls, to see just how much riding she's actually had. I'm wanting her to give that nose to me from the pressure of the bit and not move her feet. So right here, I'm just going with her until her feet stand still. And then generally that nose will tip in. As soon as she tips into it, I'll let go of the rein, giving her a release. You know, it's like pressure and release, like most horse training is. However, she doesn't have a whole lot of release in her, so I can't release on the bit first. She would much rather brace against it and throw a little fit because I'm asking her very gently to give me her head. She started releasing to the right side a little bit, so now JR is working on the left side. You can tell she doesn't. She did not act like she knows anything. The saddle don't seem to bother, but she don't know how to steer. Maybe they just use a halter and a lead rope or something. She don't steer off the lead rope very good either. Maybe they just sat on it for the best. <laughs> 
So what we're showing is not the whole lesson. It probably lasted about 40 minutes, but she was very stubborn and would hold this position for a long time. And it's always um, impressive to watch the patience that a person has to have uh, in training a horse. You have to outlast the horse. You can't just jerk that horse's head around. Uh, you have to stand there uh, with that gentle pressure. So you definitely want to make sure you have the patience and time before beginning a lesson. Most of you know by now, uh, the flies are pretty bad here at our homestead, and they were bothering her, kind of taking away her concentration. So JR uh, sprayed her with fly spray really quickly. Good girl. Have you never been sprayed with fly spray? Well, she didn't freak out on that as bad. Well, she looks... She just... A little nervous. Okay, huh? Do you want to give your professional opinion on your evaluation of her? I think she was probably rode, but not trained very well. A horse should back up with pretty light pressure. She don't have no idea what back up means. JR worked with Jewel for a while, but then he started hurting. Uh, it was just a little too much for him yet. So he handed the mare over to Becca, and she finished up the lesson. Mm -hmm. Back up. Back up. So because Jewel had very little understanding of what was being asked, Becca went right back over uh, most of the stuff that JR had just done with her, starting with the backup. Again, just like JR did earlier, Becca's asking Jewel to give her head to the pressure, and Jewel is not happy about it. Strange how much she braces against that. So what happened right there was Jewel would not release her head to the pressure, and she threw a fit instead. So Becca backed her up to reset her mind before asking uh, for that head again. So all of this may seem pretty repetitive, but that's just what it takes for them to learn, uh, for them to settle down uh, and feel comfortable um, and for it to click. Some are faster than others, some are a little bit slower, uh, just like humans really in learning. Right there, Jewel wasn't really respecting Becca's space, so Becca is showing her to stay back. Becca has learned all of her training from watching JR, her dad, and um, just watching him over the years and picking up on it and him teaching her. But as she's getting a little bit older now, her own little ways and gifts are starting to show uh, and she's starting to come into her own self. And I think one of the biggest gifts that you can see coming out in her is her gentleness and softness with these horses. And the way that she's learning to use that gentleness in her training just draws the horse into her and the horse kind of melts and softens and it's relationship with her. It's really fun watching JR and Becca and some other people we know train because they all train in a similar fashion, uh, the same foundation, but each one as an individual has their own way of communicating their own gifts and strong points that they build a relationship off of with the horse. She likes her face. Mm -hmm. You're okay, baby girl. She ain't broke. Yeah, but I just this is like her first lesson. Yeah. Okay, we'll take her to the river. <laughs> this summer. Do you want me to finish with her grandma lesson? Yeah, sure. I so just wanted to see what she looked like there. Okay, so I'm just reading her body language and her, uh, you know, watching her eyes and testing what she knows. She didn't know how to, she doesn't give to pressure. And like I've always say on the channel, uh, horse training is just pressure and release. So a horse that doesn't give to, uh, to pressure 
hasn't been trained very much. Um, she's learning quick, so I think she was, was broke at one point, probably by an amateur that didn't instill the best habits in her. Um, I can't say for sure. Or maybe she was just green broke by somebody who was a good hand and didn't have to have a horse too far along to ride it. And then they rode it a few times, and it's probably been years, because she's bracing against the bit. She's chewing the bit a whole lot, and I have a real soft bit in her mouth that's good for, like, starting colts. Um, so uh, she didn't really seem to be to mind getting saddled, but she's also invading personal space a little bit too much. And then when we just acted like we were going to get on her, you could tell there was a lot of fear there, so we aborted that before it went wrong. Um, so it's not going to be a quick tune-up like I hoped where we just have to tune the horse, uh, well-trained horse up and get her in shape and make sure her behavior's on point. We're gonna have to treat her like a horse that's never been rode and start her from scratch with groundwork and lessons. So. Kind of a bummer. Yeah, kind of a bummer. We will learn more about her. We'll take her down to the river where it won't matter if she rares or bucks or anything and get on her back a little and play with her on the first day we all go down to the river to play. That'll be fun. Um, but we can do a lesson with the baby maybe and see if we can get a halter on her. Yeah. So this is the first time that this foal has ever had a halter on and it's always a little scary for these little foals. Uh, they never really like it. Even Happy, she's the friendliest foal we've ever had. And uh, she didn't really like it the first time Becca put a halter on her either. JR was pretty much just letting the foal get used to the feel of the halter and just let her settle it down with him next to her. Uh, he walked a few circles because uh, she was walking and he just followed along really calmly. He didn't really pull on the lead rope or leader. He was just following. Um, she was walking, so he was walking and he just stay right by her. After a few laps of just walking beside her, she finally calmed down a little bit, and then he started uh, laying his hand on her back as they were walking, and she calmed <laughs> down with that too. They went around about five or six times. And then JR and Becca did a few more circles uh, where the foal followed her mama. Okay, everybody, are you guys ready for the name? The official name is going to be Homestead Magnolia. Her grandma's name was Magnolia. She's the color of a magnolia. And Homestead for the channel. Homestead Magnolia. We really like her so far. It takes lots of time with these babies, especially after her traumatic start, to get them real gentle like Happy is. A lot of people want to know what color she, that you think she'll be. She'll and be a palomino. palomino. She'll be a good dark palomino. And then also they want to know what color her eyes are going to be. Yeah. Because right now they're still that slaty blue color. Yeah, I think that she's going to have that. Yeah, it probably came from her sire. Well, I sire don't... probably has some paint lines in him or something. Oh, really? They could turn brown still, but we'll see. One of them looks brown. One of them looks like it's going to be blue. Oh, really? Let's see this one. This one's darker blue. Oh, than really? one. I can't see it from here. Maybe the camera can, though. Uh, I didn't notice that on her yet. Can you know, show? Yeah, if you can see it from this side. <laughs> she has the prettiest eyes. And look here at her muzzle, you can kind of see the baby um, fur is coming shedding off and off. shedding yeah, you off. Can see and you can see the darker color of her. That'll be her body color. Pretty girl. Yeah, she does have a long name for just a six yeah. week old baby. You're so pretty, little girl. Yeah. Okay, Becca, I'm just you. best friends with these little girl babies. Yeah, yes. little girl babies love Becca. Oh, does she feel good? The mommy is oh, falling I'm getting a too. spot. Uh. We want to make sure to say thank you to Carol for the full halter and lead rope for Magnolia. 
And then someone else sent us the purple halter for uh, the Mama Jewel. So whoever sent that, thank you. And then her matching lead rope came from Ben. So we don't know who this is from, but we got this really cool mic for doing uh, voiceovers on our YouTube videos for our channel. Uh, so it supports our channel. And uh, so whoever this was, if you're watching this, let us know. We, we're really excited to get this. For editing videos, we've actually just been using an iPhone with iMovie. Uh, but we're going to step up to a new computer and some new editing software and this is going to fit perfectly with that so thank you so much and then elka and jackie got gift cards uh, to help take care of the mare and full jewel and magnolia um, we really appreciate this this really helped thank you and then when we first got Jewel and Magnolia from the auction, to our surprise, we had folks uh, gift items from our local feed store like bedding and feed for the Marinful and then also through PayPal. Um, and so if that was you, we just want to say thank you. We were not asking for help in this situation uh, to get the Marinful um, from the auction and get them to our farm. But man, we really appreciate the support that you guys poured out to us. Uh, so thank you to every single one of you. Uh, we really really appreciated it so right now we're not really sure what we're going to do with the Marinful. Um, we may keep them here at homestead horsemanship or find a new home a good home <laughs> down the road but we're not overly concerned trying to figure that out for now the Marinful have to stay together the mom is raising her baby and uh magnolia needs her mama so we're just keeping them out on pasture and they are pretty content and happy with that but we sure hope that you like our name choice, Homestead Magnolia. If you don't know what a magnolia flower is, uh, look it up because she resembles it quite a bit. And the name Magnolia is actually quite beautiful. It symbolizes luck and stability, purity, innocence, and spiritual awakening, just to mention a few of the meanings. But the meaning behind the name is just really beautiful. And she's beautiful, and the situation was really beautiful. And we really wanted to add Homestead to her name just to symbolize our uh, channel homestead horsemanship and all that has gone on this year with it we are just blown away and completely amazed uh, by the channel's growth in just a few short months and this little girl is part of it so homestead magnolia it is so if you've enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and there's no obligations if you ever want to unsubscribe you just hit the button again it's really simple it really helps our channel's growth and lets us know that you like what you're seeing. So thank you for following Jewel and Magnolia and for all the love that you guys have poured out to them. And thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time.